Rob and John help Bran during his archery training, at which he is doing rather poorly. Rob instructs Bran to relax his bow arm. However, Bran's application of this somehow makes this his worst shot. Rob, John, and Rickon burst into laughter, and are accosted by Ned, remarking that neither Rob nor John was a skilled archer at Bran's age. Suddenly, Arya hits Bran's bullseye with an arrow before Bran can. Bran chases Arya while Ned, Catelyn, Rob, and John laugh until Ned receives news that a Night's Watch deserter has been found. Rob, 17, attends the execution of Will, the deserter, by his father. On their way home with Theon, John, and Bran, they find a litter of newborn direwolf pups. Rob is surprised that there are any direwolves south of the wall. When their father says they can keep the pups, Rob adopts one of them as his own, naming him Grey Wind. He welcomes King Robert Baratheon to Winterfell with the rest of his family. He helps his mother maintain discipline during the feast, removing his sister Arya when she starts flicking food at Sansa, despite his amusement. Rob displays an antipathy toward Joffrey from the beginning, noting that he is a right royal prick, and is visibly annoyed when Sansa looks at Joffrey in admiration. Rob bids farewell to Jon during his departure to the Wall, stating that he'll be all in black the next time they meet, which Jon agrees with, stating that the color suits him well. Due to Bran's being left comatose in a fall, his mother's refusal to leave an unconscious Bran's side, and his father's departure for King's Landing, Rob must help Maester Lewin run the castle, making new appointments to the castle staff. Because of Catelyn's absence in her care for Bran, Rob deals with the confusion and tears of his youngest brother, Rickon, which he reveals to his mother before a fire breaks out in Winterfell. While Rob attends to this, an assassin breaks in and almost kills Bran, but is stopped by Summer. When Catelyn and Sir Roderick decide that threats from the Lannisters necessitate the departure for the capital, Rob is left in command of Winterfell. Rob visits a recovering Bran and has to tell him that he will never walk again. Bran says he would rather have died. Rob receives Tyrion Lannister and Euron, both traveling down from the wall to King's Landing together. Rob very pointedly offers hospitality to any man of the watch, silently letting Tyrion know he is not invited to stay at Winterfell. When Bran arrives, Tyrion asks if he likes to ride and sympathizes with him for being a cripple, which annoys Bran, but Tyrion simply says that like being a dwarf, it is the truth, no less so for being a hard truth. He gives Bran the design of a saddle which will allow Bran to ride even in his current state. Tyrion explains to Rob that, you must shape the horse to the rider, by starting with a yearling and training it to respond to the reins in Bran's voice, as he can't use his heels. When Rob asks why Tyrion had done this favor for Bran, he explains that he has a certain sympathy for, cripples, bastards, and broken things. Due to this kindness, Rob says he can stay, but Tyrion says he would prefer the brothel in town, guaranteeing Rob's easiness. While taking Bran outside the castle to test his new saddle, Rob and Theon are talking about Rob's future plans, when they realize that Bran has wandered off. Bran has been taken hostage by a band of wildlings, but they are found by Rob who advances on them with a sword. One of the wildlings Stiv holds a knife to Bran's throat and makes Rob drop the sword. Theon kills Stiv with an arrow, which angers Rob as Bran could have been injured. Only one of the wildlings, Osha, is taken prisoner. Osha says that the greatest danger lies north of the wall, from the White Walkers, not from the Lannisters in the south, but Rob disregards her warning. Following Robert's death and Eddard's arrest, Rob receives a letter from Sansa detailing her wish for Rob to swear fealty to Joffrey, in order to maintain peace between the Starks and the Lannisters. Lewin explains that although Sansa wrote the letter, it is the words of Cersei Lannister expressed on the page. In response Rob instead calls his banners, marching House Stark's vassals to war. When Theon asks whether he is worrisome, he points to the fact that he is shaking, proving himself to be so. Theon assures him that he would be stupid not to be. Rob holds a feast for several of his newly arrived bannermen. Great Hon Umber assumes that he will lead the vanguard, and is offended by the suggestion that he would be made to march behind Galbert Glover, threatening to withdraw from the host. In response, Rob promises that, after the conflict with the Lannisters, he will oust Great Hon from his keep and hang him for breaking his oaths to House Stark. When the enraged bannerman goes to draw a weapon, Rob's direwolf Grey Wind sets upon him, biting off two of his fingers. Rob recites that, it death to bear steel against your liege lord, but then diffuses the situation by excusing Great John's aggression, saying that, doubtless, the Great Hon only meant to cut my meat for me. 
The Great Hon roars with laughter and accepts Rob's commands, much to the shock of Bran, who witnessed the entire incident. Rob says farewell to Bran and to Rickon, who is convinced he'll see neither Rob nor his parents again. Catelyn and Sir Roderick Castle intercept Rob's army in the neck as it presses southwards. Rob initially exclaims with excitement upon seeing his mother but stops short of embracing her lest he look weak in front of his bannerman. Catelyn looks at her son with understanding, later embracing once their liege lords have left their tent. She tells Rob he has no choice but to go to war. However, he cannot lose, for the sake of Ned, Sansa, and Arya, as if he is defeated, Tywin Lannister will show their family no mercy. Later on, Rob and his lords are debating on the route of their march, and on whether to march directly against Tywin's army or against Jaime's army besieging Riverrun. To get to Jaime, they need to cross the Green Fork of the River Trident, and the only crossing is at the Twins, held by the notoriously prickly and easily offended Lord Walder Frey. A Lannister scout is captured, and Rob sends him back to warn Lord Tywin that 20,000 northern soldiers are marching against him. Following Rob's arrival at the Twins, his mother instructs Theon to shoot down messenger ravens, so no word of their presence can be relayed, despite only finding a name-day message to his grandniece Walder. He quickly realizes that negotiation is the only option, which is proven to be true when Walder's envoys arrive. Catelyn goes in Rob's place as she had previous experience with Walder from her childhood and believes she is more likely to come back alive. Upon her return, Rob hears Walder's conditions. He must take on Oliver Frey as his squire and knight him in due process. Arya must marry Waldron Frey when they both reach an appropriate age, which Rob jokingly remarks on her future unhappiness, and following the end of the conflict, Rob must marry a woman of House Frey. Understanding the situation, Rob asks Catelyn about the beauty of his daughters, to which she can remember only one. He accepts all the conditions, crossing the Green Fork in the process. He sends a small force of men to distract the main Lannister army under Tywin's command at the Battle of the Green Fork. Meanwhile, his main army attacks Jaime's forces near Riverrun, winning the Battle of the Whispering Wood and taking Jaime as a captive. Jaime suggests they end the war now with a bout of single combat between himself and Rob, but Rob refuses and has him imprisoned. Rob laments that his diversion sent 2,000 men to their deaths. He gives a speech to his army and tells them that they have won a great victory, but the war is far from over. Rob is devastated by the news of his father's death. He is found hacking his sword at a tree in anger and grief. Catelyn calls to him and tells him he is ruining his sword. Rob drops the sword and falls into her arms, vowing to kill the Lannisters who murdered his father. Catelyn comforts him and promises him revenge, but only after they rescue Sansa and Arya first both of them unaware that Arya has evaded capture. At Rob's camp, Rob and his bannermen debate whether to cooperate with Stannis Baratheon or Renly Baratheon in the war against King Joffrey. Renly has greater forces, but Stannis is the elder Baratheon and next in line of succession excepting Cersei's children. John Umber questions why the Northerners should be told what to do by rulers in the South at all, reminding them that the North was independent of the other kingdoms before the War of Conquest. With the dragons gone, Umber declares there is only one king worthy of his respect and allegiance and bows before Rob, calling out, the king in the north. The other northern bannermen take up the cry and bow before the new king in the north, swearing fealty to Rob.